where motivation comes from, where that get it done attitude comes from, because most people um, don't get it done. Most people are, are emailing us and saying, hey, where do you guys get that motivation from? They can't get started. You're obviously super motivated, right? You went yeah. to a great school, you got, you got it done, you got into a great law firm, now you're at Apple. Like, where does that come from? You know, it's funny, when I think about it, it's, I almost feel like some of it is innate. It's almost, as we were talking about, like automatic. I can't pinpoint one aspect or one point in my life where I was like, you know, work hard, grind, Amelia. And it's just, to me, I, it's automatic. I don't give myself the option to not be successful and to not work hard. It's just, it's something to me that when you have successful habits, when you, when you, um, you know, really make a push to be successful, it's just as, it's like an everyday thing, like brushing your teeth. You wake up, you do it. You don't think twice about it. You don't debate whether or not you're gonna brush your teeth, you just do it. So when that alarm goes off at 4.07, because some, almost everybody listening has an alarm that right. they, right? Do you, do you want to hit snooze? Like, what, what goes on Never. in your head? Never. No. No, no way. You, there's not even a snooze button on your no, alarm No, I don't think I've ever hit snooze <laughs> once before in my life. I just don't. I, typically, I actually wake up before my alarm. I'll wake up, like, a few minutes before it goes off. I think, I mean, you just, like, get into that it. automatic, like, that rhythm. Um, and it's just non-negotiable. I just do it. Do you think people that don't have that growing up can, can spark it? I think absolutely. I think absolutely that... There's always, it's, it may not be innate, it may not be ingrained for you, but like any other habit, the more that you work at it and the more you make it a part of your life, the more automatic it becomes. Um, you know, if I find myself getting out of the routine for whatever reason, for injury, for whatnot, then I find it's harder, you have that inertia to get back into it. So it's almost like don't let yourself get out of it. For instance, right now, if, you know, if I'm injured, I will still wake up that early and instead I'm going to the pool and I'm swimming and I may only be able to swim with a pool buoy between my legs, but it's still that routine and it's still that, you know, same sense of purpose. Sure. So, so really what you're saying is that the, the getting over, the, the, getting up the first step is the hard part, yeah. but then the second step gets easier, the third step gets easier and then don't get off the staircase. D don't, don't, oh, because right. you know, once you stop, <laughs> it's very, very hard to, to get, get back going, into to it. To get going you know? again. Yeah. yeah. So I go through this notion of, of what I am, mm. and I kind of like that I don't have to define it, and I don't want to define it, and I don't like the labels, because I've realized now that I don't have to narrowly define myself in a box, mm. and that I can constantly reinvent myself, and I feel like not enough people do that, or give themselves the opportunities to do that. Yeah, reinvention to me has been really important in my life. Mm -hmm. And the, the way that I think about identity is um, maybe adjacent to that, which is I, I have this vision in my head about who I want to become. And part of the reason that I have to do the things that scare me is because the person that I want to become would do those things. Mm -hmm. um, and that as I tell myself, and I don't know like if this is just me or if a lot of people do this, but I'm always telling myself a story about myself, right? Like, you're the type of person that does that. You get out of bed fast, you do this, you do things that scare you, all of that to sort of create this self-fulfilling prophecy in myself. So that's why it was so interesting for me to hear that, you know, you would think that as you're doing these obstacle races that they would get easier. So when you're saying that in some ways they actually get more difficult, um, that was really fascinating. And you have a super interesting way of dealing with that, which I'll call chunking. I don't know if, I don't know if you use that word. I'll take that. I'm a huge Goonies fan. So anything that is like truffle shuffle and chunk, I'll, uh, You'll go I'll, I'll go with. Yes. <laughs> so you break things up into small pieces. Yeah. So I find that people get, if you look at the entirety of a task, it's very easy to get overwhelmed. And so for me, you start, you start a 24 hour race or you start a hundred mile race and you're, you look at the clock and you realize I'm two hours, I have 22 hours left to go and I'm exhausted mm -hmm. right now. And that's overwhelming. That's when people quit. Mm -hmm. So instead in my mind, I think, okay, I'm going through, if I'm going through a really rough patch in a race because things ebbs, ebbs and flows, I think just get to the next obstacle, just get to the next obstacle, just get to the next lap and not think about the entire, like the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. It's just these little compartmentalizing things. So when you're going through so much pain and when you're going through hardship, that's the thing that keeps me sane. 
is just to not think about the end game, to not try and think about two days from now when this race will be over, but just the next task at hand. So, so let's talk about commitment versus interest. I recently read, I think it was Ken Blanchard uh, who wrote The One Minute Manager. Yeah. Greatest sentence ever, like um, there are people that are committed, there are people that are interested, and interest, it finally clicked in his head, is where it's like when it's fun, you do it. Mm -hmm. When you're committed, you do it all the time. It's like a mom, right? Mom does it whether it's good, bad, doesn't matter. Right. What are your thoughts on, because on, most people I think are just, I think they just want to do the fun stuff. Well, uh, naturally. I mean, you, you want to be happy and you don't want to do the hard things. The hard, But the hard things, when you do them, are the things that really shape you and grow you. And so, to me, I almost, I gravitate towards the hard things. And I think everyone should do that because when it's fun and it's easy, you're not learning anything from that. Um, you know, and you're not, you're not pulling any valuable lessons. But when things are hard and, you know, that's, that's really your opportunity. You know, we hear that, you hear that all the time, right, with uh, psychologists yeah. and, 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 um, and so forth and movies. But um, the reality is there's actually a scientific reason for it. The brain is neuroplastic mm -hmm. and the brain changes just like our biceps do when we lift. When you go through the hard times, you're out in cold weather, right? And so you actually do get, you get a biological benefit. Forget about the, the thing we could talk about, which is, oh, it makes you tougher mentally. Right. right. It actually happens, it actually transforms take uh -huh. the stairs versus taking the elevator, right? Eat the good food versus eating the bad right. food. And I think what you're saying is each one of those moments go the hard way. Yeah, I mean, I, I think so. There are some instances where you have to make a calculated decision that where, you know, you can't, you can't make life extremely hard for yourself. Like I'm not gonna walk around with a candle instead of turning on my lights at night. Right. Um, but there are certain situations where, you know, like I think it's good to consciously choose the harder decision and consciously choose that path and then there's commitment mm -hmm. so now once you know the path you're on um are you committed or are you just interested and it sounds like you're just wired you're, yeah. just, you're just committed like if, if you had a fun race to go to in vermont right let's say <laughs> versus um staying at work yeah. how do you make that decision you know it's hard sometimes you have you have to make sacrifices it's not you have to juggle and realize that there are times where you can go have fun, but there are times where you have to, you know, put that fun aside and be like, these are my commitments and my responsibilities. And so you can't have everything all the time. <laughs> yeah, right. And that's a tough one for a lot of people. Yeah. And the other tough one you just said is um, a lot of people don't realize the fun, it, these crazy races actually are fun. Oh, they're a blast. And right. that's, and that's you know, that that is the fun. People are like, why are you taking a vacation to go run through the woods for three days? And right. like, because that's my release you know that's my outlet um so it's it, it is it's fun and then and then the other one which ties right into it is is um delaying gratification this ability to um to sacrifice now but mm -hmm. get maybe twice as much i don't know if i ever told you the story my son i tested him and you know i did the marshmallow test with him yeah and i offered him uh, a scoop of ice cream he was five five or six yeah and um we i set my alarm uh, for five minutes or whatever and i gave him the scoop and about three minutes into it, he said, Dad, how long do I have to wait to get 15 scoops? Which is the great, I mean, that's exactly. it, right? And so I thought, you know what, We're all, we all should be playing for 15 scoops. Right. And so, you know, how do you, how do you, what do you recommend to people that are having a tough time delaying gratification, right? That maybe, and it could be as simple as, I'm going to watch TV tonight. Right. Right? Well, I think for me, delay gratification can always, there's instant joy, you know, like watching TV and, and you know, sitting there and doing nothing. But I think of always, when I think of happiness, I think of experiences. And I think of the things that you look back on that, you know, are, are going to really shape your life. So for me, that's, you know, like preparing for a three-day race, preparing to run 100 miles. And so that, grad, you know, it's a lot of training and a lot of time and you have to sacrifice other things. But there's that end reach goal. And so when people have trouble finding motivation, I'm like, sign up for something. Right. You know, sign up for something that's out of your comfort zone and then build your life around that. For those people out there that are just not finding the motivation for that first yeah. step, what would you recommend? You know, you don't have to start big, start small, make one change, you know, one change a day, um, whether that's setting your alarm, you know, 20, 30 minutes earlier. So wake up at 10 a.m. instead exactly. of 10.30. Right? Exactly, and then just make that automatic. I think this mean like a habit, 
takes how long? Like three, four weeks to become automatic? There's, there's, there's different arguments as to how long it takes, but yeah, I, Where, I you know. write it probably on the wall. I'm gonna get to tell people that you're gonna do it. I'm right. getting up this time every day. That's what I do. Yeah, right. and just and just one small change, and I think that you know you start building and it will snowball.